Welcome to Solutions Studio. This is a free series on C programming language. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with this series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this series. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we want to have an overview of the search functions of the string handling library here in C programming language. So in C programming language, we have quite a number of functions that can be used for searching strings. And these functions, uh, they are listed in here. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are uh, seven functions and uh, their prototypes and descriptions are mentioned in here. And I will not go to detail of each uh, function here in this episode. Rather, I would like you to have an overview and have a look at these functions and we will cover each one of these functions in the coming episodes so stay tuned and i will see you in the coming episodes hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are discussing about one of the searching functions which is this string uh, character search function this string a character search function locates at the first occurrence of character C in the string S, as you can see in here. And if C is found, this function will return a pointer to C in the string S. Otherwise, a null pointer will be returned. So as you can see in here, here in the main function, we have an example for this function. First, we are introducing a string this string is uh, this is a test string then we have two characters a and z now here in this if statement we are seeing if we can find character one inside of string one and if it was found and null was not returned then we say that this character was found in that string otherwise we will say that this character was not found in that string the same way we have also used uh, this string with another character, which is this character 2 or a Z. And in here we also do the same thing. We want to see whether we can find the character inside of the string. Now let's go and execute this program. And as you can see, in the result of this program, A was found and this is a test string and Z was not found at all in this string. And that's it for this episode. I hope this has been informative for you, and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we want to discuss about this searching function, string C span. So as you can see here in the prototype of this function, uh, that this function will take two strings, the string 1 and string 2, and it will return a integer value. Well, uh, this function determines the length of the initial part of its first string argument that does not contain any character from the second string argument. And uh, this function will return uh, the segment's length. So as you can see in here, we have two strings, string 1 and string 2. And basically, this function is going to look into string 1. And it will look into string 1 and it will determine until which character none of the characters from string 2 is included in string 1. So as you can see in here, the length of the segment that characters from string 2 is not included in string 1 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And that's the value that we are going to get from this function. Let's go and run this program. And as you can see in the result of this program, the length of the initial segment of string 1 that contains no characters from string 2 is equal to 13 as we calculated before. And that's how this function works. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned.
Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we would like to discuss about the function string point break. So as you can see here in the prototype of this function, uh, this function will take two strings, string 1 and string 2 and it will return a character. So uh, this function will search its first string argument for the first occurrence of any character in its second string argument. If a character from the second argument is found, a string point break returns a pointer to the character in the first argument, otherwise it returns a null. So now let's go and run this program to see how this function works. Now, as you can see in here, we have two strings, a string 1, uh, this is a test, and string 2, be aware. And of the characters that are included in be aware, A appears earliest in uh, this is a test. And we, in fact, found out about A using this string point break function. And in fact, A is one of the first characters that are included in the string 2 and we can see it in string 1 as well. And that's how the string point break function works. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we would like to discuss about uh, this function which is the reverse uh, character in a string. So basically this function is going to search for the last occurrence of a specific of our specified character in a string. If the character is found uh, this function will return a pointer to that character in the string otherwise it will return null. And as you can see here in the prototype, you can see that uh, the return type is of type char and it's a pointer and it will take a character to search for and it will take a string uh, to search the character in that string. So now you can see that we have an example in this main function. We have this string a zoo has many animals including zebras. And then we want to find the last occurrence of z in this string. Now uh, you can see that we have done this uh, using this using this reverse uh, character string function and we have uh, printed uh, the result using uh, this printf statement. Now let's go and uh, run this program. Now as you can see that the remainder of S1 beginning with the last occurrence of character Z is a zebras. And that's how uh, this function strr character works. I hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we would like to discuss about the function strspn or string span. So as you can see here in the prototype of this function uh, that this function returns a an integer of size t and it will take uh, two strings as arguments string 1 and string 2. So this function will determine the length of the initial part of its first argument which is string 1 containing only characters from the string in the second argument which is string 2 and then the function returns uh, the length of the segment. Now we have an example here in the main function string 1 which is the initial part of the first argument and string 2 is a set of characters that we are looking at it and we would like to determine the length of string 1 that only contains characters from string 2. Now let's go and run this program. And as you can see in here, the length of the initial segment of string 1 containing only characters from string 2 is 13. And that is correct. Let's go and see. T is included in string 2. H also included. E included. 
space included, a V included, A included, L included, U included, E included, and all the way to here. And if we try to count these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And that's why we have been able to get this 13 using the string span function. And that's how this function works. I hope this has been informative for you, and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode, and in this episode we would like to discuss about the function str, str, or the string inside and string function. As you can see in here in the prototype, the return type for this function is a pointer. And this function will take two arguments, pointer to one string and pointer to another string. And basically this function searches for the first occurrence of its second string argument and its first string argument. If the second string is found in the first string, then this function returns a pointer to the second string's location and the first. So let's go and see an example so you can understand this function in a better way. Let's go and run this program. And here in this example, you can see that we have a string 1, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, and A, B, C, D, E, F. And then we have string 2, D, E, F. So the remainder of the string that begins with the first occurrence of string 2, which is basically D, E, F, is starting from here. So basically, so the pointer is basically pointing to this character in here and when we are trying to print at this pointer we will get the remainder part of the string that contains the first occurrence of def as you can see it starts with def and the rest of the string and that's how the string inside string function works i hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we would like to discuss about uh, the function strtok or tokenizing a string a function. So as you can see that uh, this function returns a pointer as a return value and it will take two strings as pointers and you can see that we have this string 1 and string 2. So basically this function string a token breaks a string into a series of tokens also called a tokenizing the string. A token is a sequence of characters separated by delimiters, such as spaces or punctuation marks. A delimiter can be any character that you want to select. And you can change the delimiter string in each function call. And this function modifies the input string by placing the terminating null at the end of each token. So copy the string if you want to intend to use it after the call to this function. You can see that we have defined a string here in the main function. This is a sentence with seven tokens. And now we want to tokenize this string and we want to print each one of these tokens. So how we can do that is that to give is to give a the function the string that we want to tokenize and also the delimiter, which the delimiter for us in this example is space. So basically, so basically this function will start from the beginning of this string. It will go through each one of these characters, and whenever it finds this a delimiter, which is space, it will replace uh, this space with a terminating null character and will return the pointer to the first part of this sentence. And then we are going to print that part. And once again it will continue 
Since this part is a terminating null character, it will start from this character. It will search for space. I is not a space. Is is not a space. And then we have a space in here. Now this is going to be replaced with a space. And the pointer for the location of I is going to be returned by this function. And basically this is how it's going to go over all of these parts of this sentence. And you can see that we are checking that if the function cannot find the delimiter, it is going to return a null. And by the time it returns a null, that means that our sentence has finished and we can terminate the while loop. Now let's go and run this program so you can see how this function works. Let's go and see. You can see that the string that is going to be tokenized is this string which is this is a sentence with seven tokens and the tokens are this is a sentence with seven tokens basically each one of these words has been separated by a space which is our delimiter in here and that's how we have tokenized this sentence into seven tokens i hope this has been informative for you and I would like to see you in the coming episodes. Stay tuned.